County. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Welcome to HealthLink, a program connecting home, community, and healthcare. My name is Carol Merton, and today I am absolutely delighted to have Caroline come to our program to talk about financial literacy. Before the program began, we agreed that I would not mutilate her name by trying to pronounce it, and that she would give us her full name, and in addition, her role and how long she's been involved in the role that she has before we get into the questions. So welcome so much and thank you for being here. Now your full name, please. My pleasure, Carol. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Caroline Araujo Abbott and I work with the United Way in Owen Sound. Uh, I run the financial literacy program at the United Way. So the financial literacy program uh, means that I help people. I help people who are having financial issues and we talk through a budget usually uh, and then we we figure out what are the next steps. So it's very broad, it's very wide what uh, what I can do to help support people and um, and yeah and the United Way it's one of the programs at the United Way. Our United Way in Owen Sound, Grey Bruce, um, is quite unique within the United Ways because most United Ways in bigger cities, they are they fundraise and they give get grants to social service organizations. In uh, Grey and Bruce, our United Way actually also has frontline programs. So we just went through back to school season and the backpack program was just so busy and uh, that again is another one of the programs that we do. Excellent. Now I had the pleasure of meeting you at a, at a function not even related to United Way and what really captured me is the fact that I mean the handouts that you had had on the tables money managing tips bill paying priorities really captured me and I just knew that I just had to have you on the program so thank you for being here let's go through the questions that you've shared with me um, and I'll just let them flow as you've provided so what are some of the stressful financial things people are dealing with and certainly this is a current very critical issue for all of us today yeah so it's Right now, people that have always been okay, they've they've gotten by and never really uh, they were they were, you know, being they were doing fine. Um, because of the cost of living has gone up, the cost of groceries, all of the costs are so high. It's it's new having to access programs, access resources in our area, ask for help. It's scary. Asking for help at the best of times is difficult and at the worst of times, it's it's even more difficult. So um, I'm finding a lot of people that have never had to ask for help because they've been okay. Um, they're, it's the first time and they don't know where to go to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways people connect with us is through 211. And if you are in a situation where you've never had to access resources, social services um, before, visit 211. We have a Gray Bruce specific 211. Just search on the internet 211 Gray Bruce, and uh, social service will come up, community connections will come up. Use that as a resource to get connected with things. If you're struggling, phone 211. Just like you dial 911, call 211 and say i'm struggling to pay my hydro bill mm -hmm. i'm behind in rent whatever's going on i need i need food we're mm -hmm. just not making ends meet at the end of the month what services are there that are available call 211 there's also uh every year at the same time 
seniors, they get a change in their guaranteed income supplement. Their eligibility for their old age uh, security is, um, is checked with, based on their taxes they filed for the previous year and changes. So July and August, people that may have been getting full guaranteed income supplement, full OAS, that may change and the amounts may change and decrease. And that's a big loss of income for people, especially seniors who are living on uh, CPP and old age security as their, as their incomes. So we've been helping a lot of seniors always at the same time every year, July, end of July, August. It's um, working with seniors but debt also, debt because of the cost of living increase, um, the increased cost of things, basic necessities, people are now putting them on credit cards, whereas before they may have been able to cover them or pay off their credit card, um, they aren't able to in the same way. So yeah. debt is really heavy right now for people. So I call 211 Gray Bruce and I ask for help. So fill me in on how the, the financial literacy program can help me. Yeah. So I usually what I do is I set up a phone meeting or a Zoom meeting or in person. In person, there's a lot fewer. I'm booking out much further. But over the phone, we book about an hour to have a conversation. We do mm -hmm. talk through a budget. Um, not to say you need to budget your money. To have a conversation about your expenses your income, your assets, the things you own, and the and your debts, the things you owe. That way I get an idea of your overall financial situation. Because mm -hmm. depending on that, there's different programs in our area, different uh, provincial programs and federal programs that you may or may not be eligible for. And I would then give you information about the ones that you're eligible for, um, strategies that people use usually in similar situations, uh, resources in our area, whatever, we talk through that. We talk through programs and strategies that are available to you that you yeah. can test and try. And then, and then it's really up to the person to look at, yes, these are, I want to first apply for this. I want to try applying for that. Uh, I'm going to try this strategy for a month and see how it goes. And, and I leave that to you. My program's a short-term program. It's not a long-term support. It's to get people connected, to give them ideas, and then it's up to the person to go and do those things or not. Yeah. And then when their situation changes, people come back to me over and over. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling with this. This has changed. I need help, more clarification on what I should do with this. And I'm happy and I'm always available to go through that with them. So your role is a basically almost like a financial systems navigator. You help people navigate through, right? Oh yeah. And, and it's so hard. It's so hard to try and figure out applications for government programs, applications for other programs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, we do, I like doing the full budget because if there's, if, if one thing's bugging your your phone, the cost of your phone is bugging you. I I can't keep paying this. There is there aren't any programs really to help you with the cost of your phone, but there may be a program or something that can help with a different area, and then that way it opens up some money to shift it to dealing with those other things that are bugging you as well. Right. So you mentioned you were a short-term program, but people could cycle back in as they needed. So what do you mean by short-term? Is it just that one call or is it a couple it, of calls? It depends on the person's situation. Uh, some people, they're, they just need help with knowing what programs and then they're happy and able to go and, and apply for those programs or try those strategies we've talked about. Um, and that's that's great. And then other people, they, it takes a few more times, a few more visits um, to work through whatever's going on in their life specifically. And I do focus on finances. So if it's outside of my financial realm, I then refer it on to other social service organizations. Um, and that then those social service organizations may be more long-term support. 
and then they can always come back if they have a financial specific question. So I want to get in a little bit more to the strategies. I have other questions, of course, but so what are some options for people to deal with debt? Oh, debt is so heavy. It's heavy on our body. It's heavy on our health. It's heavy on our mind. It's heavy on our relationships. Um, so I try and be as sensitive as I can about what people are going through because it's hard. It's hard to ask for help. And um, we have been we've been taught to not talk about our finances. But what we do is we talk through, we, we look at your income and your debt and what the different loads are that you're carrying. And that way we look at, do you have some extra money to spend on debts? Okay, we talk through some strategies, putting an extra payment on when your GST comes in, put an extra payment on, uh, putting an extra $5 on the minimum payment, doing that over time. Realistically, how long are you looking at to pay those debts? Because people want those debts gone now. Yeah. If you didn't get into debt overnight, it won't be resolved overnight. So we talk about realistically, what are those options? If someone's debt is more than they're able to do that way, then we look at the next sort of step. I've got connection with Credit Canada. Credit Canada is a not-for-profit organization that helps people deal with debt. They are registered with the Canadian government in that capacity, and they have a debt repayment program. And that helps to pay back every dollar that you owe, but at a lowered interest or no interest. They negotiate on your behalf with the creditors, the people you owe, and they then you do credit counseling with them along the way. Yeah. So that if, if your debt again is more, if that's not gonna be the best option for you, we then look at talk connecting with the insolvency trustee. Insolvency trustee, is registered with the government to deal with people's debt. They are chartered accountants. People know them for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is actually the last resort. Before bankruptcy, there's a consumer proposal. And with mm -hmm. a consumer proposal, you pay a portion of your debt back to those creditors over a certain amount of time. The insolvency trustee helps you write that, they write that proposal with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then they give that to your creditors. Yeah. Your yeah. creditors then say yes or no. If that's not an option, bankruptcy, we also talk about bankruptcy and look at it as a fresh start, not as um, not as something that, that's there to make you feel bad about yourself or to ruin everything. We talk about it as a fresh start and what are your options to help rehabilitate your credit. I was fascinated with your term snowball or avalanche. Oh that. yeah. So, so with the, uh, with those, when you are trying to deal with your own debt, uh, so you're not yet ready to, to try those other programs, we've talked about the snowball. So snowball is you look at all your debts and the debt that is the, um, the lowest debt that you can get rid of the fastest, you pay the minimum payments for all of the, uh, all of your debts, except one. And with that one, you put extra money onto that one until it's paid off. Yeah. And then that gets gone. And then you take that money that you were paying towards that and you put it on the next one, the next right. lowest one, and you get rid of them that way. And that's the snowball. The yeah. avalanche is you look at the debt that has the highest interest and you get rid of that one. So wow. you do the same thing that you were doing with minimum payments for all your debts and then an extra little bit of money going on to the highest interest debt specifically, you then get rid of that. And mm -hmm. then that goes on to the next one, right? Once that one's gone, that money you were paying towards that, you put that onto the next highest interest one. With that, you're usually saving money in the long term on interest, but it can be hard to stay motivated if that's a really high debt, it's gonna take a long time. Yeah. So the snowball, you get rid of the smallest debt first, but it's gone and you feel motivated. Uh, the other way, you have to work a little bit more to stay motivated. Yeah, that that's fascinating. I've not heard of those techniques before, but it, it sure makes sense. And that still gives people the choice, right? Yeah. Sometimes when you feel absolutely powerless over handling your debt or overwhelmed, it's it's nice to know you have choices still on how what you can choose. Uh, and I think that's as far as tackling the debt. 
So why wouldn't people just say, you know what, I can't pay it, I'll declare bankruptcy and not even try? That, because bankruptcy is not free. The first bankruptcy costs $200 a month for nine months. And oh. it stays on your credit report for up to seven years, usually about six and a half years after you leave the, the bankruptcy, after oh. you're released from the bankruptcy. And it hurts your uh, your debt, your it hurts your credit report, sorry, the most versus a consumer proposal, which help, hurts it less and a debt repayment program, which hurts it the least. Um, okay. But for some people, they're way overwhelmed um, and they're unable to make minimum payments or they're just making minimum payments and aren't eating away at any of the actual debt, just the interest. Mm -hmm. And if you're in that situation, then we look at those other programs to help you get away because your debt, your credit report may already be impacted negatively mm -hmm. and using these programs is not going to hurt it that much more or mm -hmm. it's not going to be the thing that impacts it as much as not being able to pay those debts. And the way you describe it, I mean, it sounds like there are choices and there are options that most people in their day-to-day -day living wouldn't even be aware of. You know, you have a bill come in, you pay the bill, or you can't, you know, or you choose interest. So th there is a whole other landscape for financial strategies that you're able to provide through the information. Yeah. And everything I, all the information I provide is optional. I provide options so that people can make informed decisions yes. because I'm not living their life. I don't want people looking up my bank, bank statements. It's embarrassing, right? Yeah. If people saw yeah. how much yarn I buy, they'd be like, you got a yeah. problem. I do. I know that. But <laughs> let's talk about what your options are in a safe place to talk about them it's fully confidential it's free you don't there's no eligibility requirements and I don't look at your bank statements unless that's going to be something that's going to really help you and you agree yeah I am sure that <clears throat> for some people it's a very emotional topic and that you know I, I, I just can't even imagine some of those conversations that you you hear but let's talk up let's make it real you have some client stories I do. Well, I want to come back to the seniors because when people lose their guaranteed income supplement, you know, they're in reality, people don't realize this. Um, but if you've been living on social assistance your whole life, or if things have happened to you, life events have happened to you. And for some reason, you only have your Canada pension plan and your old age security as your income once you turn 65. That at most with the guaranteed income supplement included in that is going to be around $1,800. That's it. That's all you have for a month. So when someone loses their guaranteed income supplement, that's a big deal because they might be going from that $1,800 a month down to $900 a month. Wow. It wow. may go to half. Yeah. It's terrifying. So in um it's really important to do your taxes on time okay. that avoids a lot of stuff but we've got some seniors that have come to us we have two seniors that um specifically come to mind they've they've lost their guaranteed income supplement they've lost their old age security and they've gone down to incomes that are 900 and 1200 dollars a month so they're not able to meet rent they're not able to meet their hydro they're not able to meet their phones they're not evil. They're making difficult decisions whether to eat or not. Mm -hmm. Those are hard decisions that I don't want anyone to ever make. So uh, we've got a senior that we connected with a, uh, a program that helps to pay rent. Mm -hmm. So there are criteria for that, that they had to, that uh, we had to go through, but we were able to help that senior pay their rent mm -hmm. for two months. Mm -hmm. And that way, that money that they do have coming in, they can use for food, they can use for phones, because there are no programs that are going to help you pay for your phones um, that I'm aware of. If anyone's aware, please let me know. But we also connected with uh, a hydro program called the Ontario Energy Support Program, which gives them a credit on their monthly hydro bill. Now, that's not going to 
appear on their bill for a few months, but they know that it's coming. And it was an action that they could take that was to help themselves. Uh, and then also we connected with them with the LEAP program, the Low Income Energy Assistance Program that will pay up to $500 once a, month, once a calendar year on someone's hydro roofs. All of those programs have criteria, um, but we were able to connect them with that. So their hydro bill is going to go down. Their hydro uh, will get paid. Their rent has gotten paid and they're able to use the little bit of money they have for food for uh, some other life necessities and then connecting them with um, Alex Ruff's office to help Alex Ruff's office is as able to help um, talk to CRA, help talk to Service Canada about what's going on in these clients life and then uh, it can help speed up the process or clarify something that's very confusing about why the GIS was turned was um, was stopped. So I just got a call this morning from a gentleman, one of these people that is, he's just overwhelmed because he got a letter that said, it's coming back, his GIS. So it was really, you know, a terrifying time, scary time, never had to use programs, getting connected with the programs that made a difference in his life. And he's able to move forward without taking on all of the debt and taking on all of the uh, long-term issues that come with a short-term disruption in your income. A couple of things that have come to mind, certainly as I read your information, that very much your function is to advocate, even to uh, the political representative, to try and help, like it's not just dealing with issues locally, that you advocate for those who are at risk. The other thing that's come to my attention, a couple of things, and for sure your comments would be very, very welcome. We know that there are more seniors now having to access the food bank who've never had to access before. So there's a change. And we also have heard, you know, you mentioned about change in circumstance, but when you have two seniors, uh, spouses, partners, friends, whatever, living together, and one passes away, they had budgeted for two incomes and they're now down to one through no fault of their own. And some can no longer stay. And we have heard that there are people who've had to stay in cars until they can be placed in homes by the first names list. Can you speak to that? Because I think it, I mean, this is life, life and death issue, financial stability. Can I, can you comment on that? Absolutely. So uh, the seniors are getting a guaranteed income supplement. That is a guaranteed income. So during COVID, we had CERB. The, uh, CERB was a guaranteed income for people. That is what the seniors are getting. And it makes a huge difference in people's lives mm -hmm. because they can rely on it. Yes, once a year, there is potential of losing it. If you put things in place, if you work uh, with someone ahead of time, that can help you figure it out. We can minimize the impact of that. But for seniors that go from two to one, I've seen seniors that are have roommates. They're going into roommate situations because the cost of things is so expensive right now. And I, I know that, yes, some people have been living in their cars. Some people uh, previously storage units were, were uh, an issue for people who didn't have anywhere else to go. Those are not things that we want people to do. No. So no. 211, like if you are looking at homelessness, if you are at risk of losing where you're staying, yeah. call 211 because they can get you connected with the local resources. Yeah. And... Um, and ask for help earlier. You know, if someone comes to me and their debt is $20,000, well, that's fine. We're going to work through it. Absolutely. If they had come to me when it was 15 instead of 20,000, it would be, there's different options available at that time. Mm -hmm. 
One thing also for seniors living on a low income, on the United Way website, under programs and the financial literacy, there is a resource we have about um, dying on a low income. It's the end of life guide. And that end of life guide, it, we've just updated it recently this year. And it's got in there, what, is, what does a modest funeral look like or a modest end of life look like from that mm -hmm. perspective? What are the resources that are available to people at end of life? What are some things that, they can, that you can think of before your end of life or that if you have someone in your life who has passed away, you can look at this, uh, that resource and see what are some options to help you finish up that person's end of life for them. Yes. Now, connecting with the financial literacy program, you have a whole bunch of organizations, and I want to be sure we get this in because you've just got a few minutes left in the program that can refer patients or not patients, clients. I'm in healthcare. I say patient. <laughs> yep. You don't. It's clients. Yep. I, uh, I have organizations from all over. So like VON refers, uh, the Ontario works offices will refer Alex Ruff office refers to me as I refer to Alex Ruff's office. Mm -hmm. Um, YMCA, uh, all, uh, closing the gap, all of these different organizations in the last year, uh, just the, just this year in 2023, I've had over 30 organizations referring people to me. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's a large number. People can also get connected themselves. So mm -hmm. you can call 211, ask for the financial literacy program. You can call the United Way's office. Mm -hmm. You can look on our website, unitedwaybg.com and get connected to me, but also look at the other programs for the United Way and elsewhere. Yeah. So certainly your advice to people, you know, that, that I'm hearing is certainly get informed, ask for help, but ask for help early. If you're starting to struggle um, before you, you really get below, way below that water level, um, ask, ask for help, that it's confidential. So we have one minute left in the program. What would you like to profile before it's time to sign off? Ooh, kids are back to school. Um, <laughs> there is the registered education savings plan. And okay. people hear about this as a learning grant. So the government, if you put money in, the government will put a small portion in matching 20%. But there is the learning bond as well. That is free money if you're, if you're a family on a low income. The bond is free money from the government. You do your taxes, you sign up for the RESP and the learning bond, and that's good money for when your kids uh, graduate from high school and go on. Excellent. I have found this so informative. I am so delighted to have had this chance to talk more with you about what you can offer. So thank you. And I hope you'll come back again and tell us more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Please you. have me. Yeah. Thank you to all who have joined us as our viewing audience. Please join us again to learn more about programs, resources, and services available to you and to your family. Take care and stay safe. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs> Are you low on food? Struggling to pay the bills? Overwhelmed by life's challenges? When you need support but don't know